<laughs> All right, y'all. Today we have this came in in the mail from uh, somewhere in the U.S. I can't even remember where. Uh, about a week ago, I hadn't had a chance to mess around with it yet, but this is a double key, or what appears to be a double key bit key mortise lock. Probably, I'm going to guess from the 30s, 30s, 40s era. Obviously, we have a broken latch spring here, and that is not really doing what it's probably supposed to. So let's go ahead and take it apart and see what's going on. I have taken this apart to just glance in there. It is in desperate need of, <laughs> of cleaning. So as I have said in other videos before, it is very important to take a picture before you start doing any of this of the inside of the lock and in uh, this was a uh, I opened this in a package opening video and we saw this flat spring here I'm not sure where that goes but all of this is rusty so what we're going to do here is we're going to again get a picture of it because we have some interesting spring things going on down here and uh, if you did not have a reference to go back by for this particular one, it is going to be pretty problematic to do anything uh, to, to get back together. Even though there's really not that many parts. But we need to figure out what is going on. He took this apart prior to it coming to me. Okay, this is beautiful. This is a actual dual key lock. Now, and I discovered in that video that this, you can immediately tell. Oh, come off. This right here bent around. So this spring will have to be replaced because it bends around. I don't know, my hand's probably going to be in the way here a little bit. But it looks to me... I don't know where that bend, bent around to. Presumably it would bend around and catch. There, but there is not a nub that sticks up. And also if we look at the inside warding, we do have some interesting warding on these keys. So one key is warded. Now how these work is um i've never fully like you know thought about it or anything i'm just now off the top of my head kind of guessing how it works there's a lockout looks like if you have a warded or actually that's got a ward there too and that when you put the key in is going to block it so we uh both need to clean it up but i'm going to go ahead and clean it up before we figure out what's going on with oh got another Got another broken piece. There are two broken springs on the deadbolt. There is a broken piece or spring somewhere here that looks like it was spring loaded. Okay, I uh, got the picture of it, and let's just go ahead and start taking it apart. All of these are going to have to be cleaned up. So it looks like one of these two, whew, this one's in need of some help. So it looks like this one definitely went around here, more than likely. like that pressing down there and I'm 
that okay that one went up this way and around oh my goodness so when you lift that up it would push it back down so we're gonna have to replace both of those springs and usually it's not that difficult to do <clears throat> but you do have to drive it out and then drive in a new one however I have not figured out what is our latch holdy backy normally on a lot of these there's a spring here that just pushes it keeps it pushed forward or even a post with it right here that makes it push forward but I'm not seeing either one of those and you gotta don't always remember to keep your latch facing the same way When you put it back together, I forgot a pair of tweezers that would help you get it all off. Hub. All right, one of our surviving springs up here. This type of spring is very common in this top corner. That's your uh, return knob return. And here is our toggle. And one of the toggles does have its own spring mechanism in it as well. So there you go. There is the whole shebang taken out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go clean this out clean this off with a wire brush and whatever else is necessary and uh, soak a lot of this rust out of here and then we'll get to replacing these two springs and then figure out how that works exactly so I found a uh, tin just get a, a tin of some kind I'm going to take out the last one that I did there I'm just going to transfer all this into a tin so that I can hose it down with the cleaner that I'm going to use, which I have not quite figured out what I'm going to do there, but uh, all these springs can stay out. And uh, go uh, wire brush these off just to get it all the surface rust clean and then spray a protectant lubricant on there and blow out all the, the very common dirt dauber nest which is almost always prevalent in these things. So let's get started doing that. All right, so I'm going to use the last remaining bit of my crud cutter, the must for rust. Uh, simply because I bought some CLR, which is calcium lime rust. It's a removable, but it's been around for a long time. And I picked up a jar of it and I brought it back to the shop or I brought it to the house. Whichever, wherever it may be, I don't know where it is right now. So we are just going to crud cutter it with this old paper towel. And I didn't have a whole lot left. I've done a video on using this stuff for chisels, but I've never done this. So this is actually pretty dangerous to do. not knowing what the results might end up being but it looks like we are getting most of this rust off here 
a lot of it. A lot of it looks like the black metal finish has been scraped off and that's where the rust is forming. So that is going to be expected where there's not protected metal. Once that black protective coating is not there anymore, you're definitely going to have instances with or cases of rust popping up on the case. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the front of this too. This may take goof off to get this paint off. We will see about that. It's a whole separate issue. Notice I went and put on rubber gloves for this. The stuff is, aside from, as I mentioned in that last video, aside from smelling horrible, it's very toxic compound, but it is definitely getting the rust off. That's shiny. I did scrape a little bit of that off with uh, a wire brush just to get, you know, the surface rust off. I think that needs to sit. I need to flip that over. Let's flip that over. That, we're gonna have to clean the paint off of the latch there. But, everything seems to be doing okay in its bath. The must for rust does not get off paint for sure. back with some clean water I have washed off these and they are about to go get treated with as soon as they air dry so I can see what other issues we're looking at remember using that crud cutter kind of makes everything white afterwards so I'm just gonna pat dry these as good as I can I didn't take it all the way on that front, but it looks a lot better. Probably get painted over immediately again anyway. But I tried to get out all the paint. Looks like I've still got some paint going on here. So I'm gonna go take some goof off just to get that paint off. Not really a big deal, but since I have gone this far with it, that is what I'm going to do. So let's just go ahead and wash all these off. It's got the crud cutter on it. And then we will dry this pan out again and hose it down with a lubricant. I'm trying to decide which one I want to use for my initial. In other words, my initial, whoop, get back in there. My initial lubricant being the first thing I spray on there that is gonna like start bonding with this bare metal. Those are bronze. Those definitely lightened up. Of 
with a little bit of paint on them too. But I just want to get all the caustic chemical off is basically what I'm doing here. So that we can get that part out of the way. Touch up will be with uh, anything else. As far as necessary, we, we are way past the necessary point. All this is just to make this look really good. A lot of this rust that was on here really right now is not a problem. Maybe if it would have been allowed to continue, it would start, you know, deteriorating in there. And uh, we'll just wet these. These do have a little bit of rust on them. But that'll be taken off when I this and let's go ahead and let these air dry and get to replacing the springs and I'm probably going to do a first coat of uh, <clears throat> probably I don't know I don't know what I'm going to use for my first coat I may do a Houdini and see how well it bonds with the metal. Because there will be coats later on. But what I need right now is a lubricant that will kind of seal the metal at the same time. To prevent the rust from popping back up. And then as we get it all together and all that, we will eventually come back and coat it with a heavier lube so when, uh, Houdini does a really good job of air drying like spraying it on stuff and letting it air dry and then bonding into the metal so that's probably what I'll use for the first dose so let's go wash all this off These springs here and uh, find a couple of pieces of metal just like this to use to replace this one and this one all right yep we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and use the Go grab that phone. I got the key. I just need it cut. I just got the key. I just need it cut. Yep. Sorry, buddy. Ain't gonna happen. I think if we lay all these in here just right, we will have room for everything. Oh, get out of there. Right, so put you down here. Put you up there. Put you right there. And put you fellas kind of over here in the corner. And uh, you. Where can you go? There you go. All right. So we can see how it's starting to turn white right there but everything's cleaned up so um, I am going to spray it and let it dry and then we're going to while I'm doing that off camera I'm gonna go ahead and try to locate some really thin springs like this and once I get a first coat dry then I'm gonna go ahead we'll move it over to the vise and uh, we'll hammer this out put our new two, two new springs in and be good to go. But in the meantime, let us 
hose this down. And I'm just going to let this air dry. Uh, flip over a couple of pieces here. So we get equal coverage. Let that air dry. In the meantime, I'm going to go off camera and uh, try to locate some of this. I don't. I have some that small. Just got to find it. Okay, y'all. So what we do here is we're going to drive out the remaining spring pieces, and by doing that, I just kind of open up a little slot across my vise here. Now this one's already poking out on this side so i'm actually gonna well it's actually poking out from both sides sometimes you can lever it out oh, it's pretty tight in there most of the time you're gonna have to come in and just carefully tap it out with a screwdriver of some kind or something like that Now that may spread this or bend it a little bit, but it can be bent back into shape. So we see we got our piece out there. And we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Let's see, let's go from this side. Whichever side looks better. One side may be poking up further. Got to be very gentle with these. Don't want it to break or anything. Let's see. Let's see if we can lever it out. That one is in there really well. It looks like with an extra piece. So uh, let's just tap a little bit more. See if we can get it on. If you're not right on it, it's not gonna tap out. Very easily anyway. Try something different there. I'm not wanting to be as cooperative, so I'm going to try to get it to lever out. Coming. I'm using side cutters, but I'm not cutting anything. Right, let's see if we can push it out this direction. I need to spread this open just a bit. There it goes. In there, all right. 
so we got our two pieces out and uh we are going to get some steel i have not found what i want to use for that i thought about using some round wire because i do have plenty of round wire and that would probably work well i'm still thinking about that because i don't have any of that spring steel that thin so we'll uh play about ear here, here. All right, y'all, the only spring steel I had was too wide, so I'm grinding it down slowly to keep the heat from building up. I gotta get another tube of uh, spring steel because I've only got like three pieces of the wide left and it has to be extremely narrow. I've already ground one end down and uh, got it installed on the lever and I'll show you me putting it on the second lever. Alright, that's about as far as I can go. I gotta do the rest freehand. It's advisable to use rubber gloves to do that, but uh, I'm gonna let that cool first. Then we're gonna go over there and put it in that lever and wrap it around. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, now that we've, uh, now that it's cooled down, we've got that, but it is still. A little too wide so I'm just gonna hand and also it has little edges so I'm gonna hand uh, do it you gotta be real careful doing this very lightly down right, so this one goes in there and then around like I said I've already done the other one and it seems to slip in better than well no this one this one's still pretty tight, so I'm just going to lay it in line here, see if I can't get it to tap in on its own. Yeah, there we go. Alright, I'm going to get it in here, I'm going to go back over to, are you in? barely here so tap 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 more like a beat 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 and I'm gonna round round paint it flip it over round peanut that'll hopefully hold it in. I'm gonna give it a few whacks this way. Not 
hard because I don't want that circle to deform. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around, make sure it wraps correctly. So you want that spring. Boing. That's why you have to use a spring still. Now I'm kind of going off center here, so I'm going to kind of try to bend it back like it needs to be. And then I'm just going to clip it off with clippers again at a certain length, leaving it long enough to make sure that uh, I have enough room to, you know, work with. It can always be clipped down later, preferably not with side cutters that are not designed to do that. And uh, this goes back in here. Here's my other one. And then we were gonna get to putting it back together and figuring out, obviously trimming them down, but there's our new spring steel things. We just have to get them in there and test them several times. And uh, figure out the latch deal there is still a spring that I'm missing for that latch and I just have to figure out how it goes in there but uh, I've got to go on to another project right now plus I still haven't had word back I don't know if I'm making a key for this or not um, so I'll be interested to find out from the customer after I get a return email whether he wants a key so we'll just go from there All right, y'all, we are back at it. This has been baking long enough, and I need to get it back together. This is the picture that I took. Uh, whew. Um, beautiful. We've got a beautiful coating. It is, it looks like that lubricant, the series of lubricants that I use, has uh, pretty much, still icky, but, you know, that's fine gonna be icky but we gotta get it back together and we gotta get a key I started on a key he did approve the key I started on the upper key and if we look oh, let me go up here and see if I'm when I hold this up it's kind of don't know yeah there we go okay so I'm just seeing how I need to hold it so this is the upper key which you might notice is uh, shorter the flag of it is shorter than this lower one you can see those are two different heights. When we put this key in, it's got a gap. Put this key in, it has no gap. So it's actually a two key lock. Now this solid post right here limits it. It will not let it turn that way. And it only would turn that way. So that's kind of interesting. So I've shaved down a, I think this is a 13B or 16B, one of those. <clears throat> and uh, but we got to get it back together so that we see how and plus we got to remember how which way the latch was facing gosh I hope that latch is that way I think it is all right so our obvious ones we got hub um, spring with my new spring, spring with my new spring. I got a cutter right here to cut it. This spring was still good. This little doodad goes somewhere, that doodad goes somewhere. I know that holds it together. And uh, we got several broken springs. Good spring. Pivot, I know where that goes. That goes here, here, and then this has this. So, um, this one I remember had this spring like 
stat so that it gave it spring tension up against this fella right here. So when you move that in and out, it gives it a nice little click feeling. And, uh, gosh, gosh, I hope y'all can see that. And uh, the other one in my hand is uh, that little nib points up and the center divider is here that swivels the two. So that is the easy part. Hey, we're done. Wait, we got a, okay, I looked at this close. I just noticed this one is got an oblongated slot. And a, a, presumably that helps it snick back and forth. But what that does is it locks the hub, which are gonna be our two pieces right here. And if I zoom in on my picture, it looks like this bad boy was on that side. This bad boy was that way. This fella, this fella was flat up here. So that goes there, that goes there. Our spring here. Pushed up on that, went around the little lip of it, hooks in there to there to there. All right, so now that gives that gives the return latch mechanism, <clears throat> which is right here. That lets that gives it spring when you turn the handle, but we're still missing some type of spring in this area. Now there's a hole in it, but, and you would think maybe a, a, a tension spring that would hook into that hole and go somewhere, but there's no marks. Oh well, you know, I did sand it pretty good. So I'm wondering if there was a spring under it or something. Because no just regular coil spring is going to... See, that just doesn't make sense. This makes sense. See, when you push in, it locks into the hub. That's, that's good. This down here. Okay, so uh, now we come to somewhat interesting part. It would be here, and that loops under that. Yeah, I'm thinking the spring may have been on this ledge right here. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. this fella goes, okay, I think that one was upside down. I think it actually goes this way, so we're gonna hold off on that for a minute. This guy goes. Uh, that guy goes right there. Yeah, he wasn't broken. So that was there to there to there. So there's our there's our top key. Um, looks like when you turn the key and lift. It doesn't go that way, but when you do it this way, it lifts the locking area and pulls the latch back. And then when you, and then it stops. That's all it does is it just pulls the the latch back. And then the uh, other one would throw the bolt. Yeah, then, and you would need that because this one locks the hook. Wow, okay, I got it. I got it figured out, but I don't have this figured out.
This goes there. This has to be it. So where did that spring wrap around to? That's what I'm wondering. A curve. That's why that spring was messed up. That's why I couldn't find the freaking spring. Because that spring was broken, and that's what controls. <laughs> light bulb. A light bulb just popped over my head. Um, so, but yeah, we gotta trim this one. <laughs> I'm done, figured it out. But I wonder if it wraps all the way you're used to wrap. Cause that other one wrapped fairly well. That would give a little bit more attention. We're gonna, we're gonna clip this sucker right. There. And uh, so now I don't know what I know what else we got to do here. We got to get this here. Oh come on! Well, I got a four knot. I got to clip this one too. So this one at first, uh, when it came to me, was incorrect. So now uh, we have a resprung latch. Let me get up here so make sure y'all can see it. That bar is the tension that we were missing. And then this is bent over. And when you lift the key, it allows you to throw the bolt up. And likewise, when you use the key here, you move that out of the way and that pulls the latch back to that stopping point. And then when you let go of the key, it comes back out and this goes back up. So to lock the handle, if the handle was locked and you were on the outside or inside or whatever you could use this key to open it and if you wanted to deadlock it you would use a whole different key to do that or possibly the same key nope not tall enough uh you're definitely not tall enough so it's definitely a two key system one for privacy one for uh, the security part of it. There we go, guys. <clears throat> I'm going to, and it's uh, pretty much, this one's pretty much done. I'm just going to take a reading on uh, on the depth. It may actually be fine. Let's put it together and see what happens. Huh? No, 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 yeah. No, 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 yeah. Uh, Okay, so what do we got? There we go. Make sure it's even all the way around and uh, find a screwdriver because I did not bring one with me. We don't need no stinking tools. I don't need no stinking tools. Okay, good enough. <clears throat> so, in either side. Just one side. 
Oh, there we go. Kellogg's like, oh my god, I haven't worked in years. Uh, 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 well, I have not finished this key, by the way, so that may be what is uh, kind of squirreling us up. Uh, it's still rough, it's, so it's hanging up a little bit. I think that's why it doesn't work as well as it could. It's working, but it's got a little wobbliness to it. But other than making the other key, which is probably just a single bit key, it's not gonna be any big deal. It's just basically cutting down the key to fit, like I cut down this one to fit there. Now I just cut that down to there. And this gentleman is gonna be a happy camper because he can put his door back in use. And uh, so that's it, I'm gonna do one more little clip showing the key. I'm not gonna show making the key because Literally, it's just taken uh, this key and because it came with a bigger flag and grinding it down till it fits the keyhole and then grinding the sides down so that it turns. If you notice, the inside of the case um, had some ridges right on the side of it, so I may need to make some uh, kind of swoopy cuts closer up here. But other than that, we are... We are done. I gotta go touch it. Yeah, see, it's, it hangs up right there. And that just means I need to touch it up. So I'm gonna leave it out, be right back. I'm gonna finish this up so we can get this in the mail back to this gentleman Monday morning. Okay, y'all, so I've got it made. I'm running into just a couple of issues, not major ones, but again, we'll show you um, okay, well, let's start off. Remember, this was a two-part spindle, okay? So, if you're using a solid spindle that does not have a swivel in the middle, you are going to get locked out from both sides if you push this in. Because when that's pushed in, that's locking only one side, not this side. This side's still free to turn. So if you're using a straight spindle, and I've talked about Baldwin spindles and stuff like that here in this video, if I can find it. Um, so when you're using a straight spindle, if we come in with my sample Baldwin, and it's pushed in and locked, because it's locked, it's not gonna be allowed to turn. These are swivel spindles, and they swivel or unscrew. So on uh, just the plain swivel or a unscrew, tighten it down, then back it off like one and a half turns. There should be not a huge gap, but you got like tight. And we back it off just a bit so that it's square. And we're gonna keep on turning by one more turn. So that lets you turn. It needs to turn 90 degrees. So that gives you the room. All right, so when you use this split spindle, Basically what's happening is you're allowed to turn, Let's see if I can do it without a knob, but you're allowed to turn one side and get the door to open while the other side, turning it, is locked. See it wiggling back and forth there? So that's a very important thing to do. If you put this back on the door, and you just use a straight spindle without that swivel in it, uh, your lock is going to be requiring a key to open, which luckily this one does. You have a key that opens it. Let me turn the key. It lifts up the bar over there on the right. Oh, hold on, let me get behind the camera a little bit better. There we go. Things to fall out. So the flag pushes up enough for that to clear, which pulls the latch back. So that would be the only way if you were using a straight spindle and you push this in and it's locked and you had the straight spindle, you would have to use the key to open the door. You wouldn't be able to turn the knob at all. So when you're putting this on the door, make sure the inside of uh, Make sure this part is on the inside. 
So I'm assuming it is. I'm assuming the door closes uh, this way. I'm just going to double check with the customer beforehand and make sure he has a, a split spindle. But then I went and I grabbed a different key. And this was actually a pre-cut. I modified it just a bit. It needed to be ground down to work here. Had to take, uh, as I thought I would, I'd ha I had to take a little bit of the, come on, focus. Had to take a little bit of the sides down, and that was for what I just mentioned earlier, this kind of hoopy area right here. But, and then I had to cut a slot in the center because without the center or lever, see how the slot goes in that lever and raises it just enough to clear that. May have gone almost went too deep on that slot but when you hold the key steady in the lock it is better Let's see and then that lets you do that so without that slot right there to put this up it pushed it all the way let's move this here when i didn't have the slot in it it pushed it all the way up and would not allow it to turn. So that's it. The only issue I have at this point is when I tighten this bad boy down, it puts stuff in a bind. I am going to actually try this multiple times. I'm gonna literally keep on and keep on. But when I tighten the one screw down, it's the one bad thing about one screw locks like this is both of the keys work fine when it's uh, tighten tighten down. Not quite, you know. There's a there's a there's a point, obviously, with a screwdriver. But uh, I'll show you the key. Throws it out beautifully. Make sure your key, whatever you're using, once it throws it out, make sure you, you tap that and it doesn't fall back in. If it does, then you're using the wrong key. So there we go. First time it has been used in probably a long time. I'm probably gonna redo this key. I think I may have gone a little too deep with my cut, but uh, yeah, it looks like I did. So, oh, there, yeah, okay. So yeah, I'm gonna redo this key. This was just kind of a test key to check it out to make sure that it was working. Um, so let me redo that key real quick and then we will be done with this bad boy. Okay guys, got it wrapped up. Am I recording? I am recording. So here is our final result. We have our bigger deadbolt key and our key for our latch for when you lock one side. And using a longer blank so that the keys look different. Well, obviously they look different, but we have our deadbolt key. So that is it off to a life of happily locking and unlocking doors back on your hopefully original door. All right, thanks for watching guys. Y'all have a good one. I didn't want to make it too pretty. I mean, come on now. <laughs> little bit better than it was and it actually works thanks for watching we'll catch y'all next video